Hey everyone, my name is Ryan and I'm currently an incoming vet student at the University of Melbourne as well as a second year life sciences student studying at the National University of Singapore. So when I first started making YouTube videos, I actually created a video talking about my pre-vet journey at the National University of Singapore. And in that video, I focused mainly on my experiences and as a result, some of you guys actually requested for more information on the application process as well as my um, statistics. So I'll do my best to cover those in today's video. Before I begin, I would first like to say that this video is not a flex, but rather it, it is meant to provide some insight on what kind of grades I actually had to score in order to make it to vet school. Also, my friend Jasmine, a vet student at Murdoch University, actually also made a similar video a few weeks back. So do check it out to find out how she got into Murdoch. My story is slightly different from the other vet students that directly applied to vet school as originally I was already planning to study life sciences at the National University of Singapore first before graduating and moving on to study at the University of Melbourne. Hence, I applied to study life sciences in 2018 after my A-levels which coincidentally coincided with the time when NUS launched their concurrent degree program. So when I found that NUS actually launched the concurrent degree program, I decided to jump straight into it. I applied for the program in 2020 after I completed my national service. At that point in time, the main requirements that I had to fulfill was that I had to be an incoming life sciences student at the National University of Singapore and that I had to have a strong biology background. Thankfully, I scored an A for my biology during the A-levels and I also represented my junior college in the biology Olympiad um, during JC1. So that really helped with my application. If you guys are curious about my subject combination for my A-levels, it's actually um, BCMG. When I was applying for this program, I also used my animal shelter helper, animal ambassador as well as animal clinic experience when applying. I also decided to add a line in my resume stating that I created a neighborhood watch group to patrol for animals that were abandoned or injured and I also organized a trip to the SPCA. A combination of having a strong biology background, having substantial animal experience really helped me to get into this program. After applying for the program, I actually had to wait for a few weeks before they actually contacted me again telling me that I actually made it into their interview round. And also because during that period of time, um, it was actually at the height of the COVID-19 pandemic. So what happened was I actually did my interview via Zoom. And since I did my interview quite a while back, my memory is pretty hazy. But some things that I feel that you should definitely be sure of is why you would like to be a vet and also um, why you are applying for the program and um, are you aware about the rigors of the program as well as how you will safeguard your mental well-being when studying for um, this um, intensive program so here my results for the first semester so when i first started studying at the national university of singapore i actually felt that my mind was really slow because i actually just spent two years serving my national service and as a result uh, i've not used my brain to think for a very long time but thankfully things turn out much better than expected and if you were to remove my elective modules and just count the core modules alone my cap for that semester was actually a 4.3 which was enough to continue on with the concurrent degree program. During this semester, I actually overloaded by one module too. So I had to deal with adjusting to university as well as um, to deal with that additional workload. It was... So during the second semester, I actually overloaded by two additional modules. So the workload was much heavier, but because I've already gotten used to university at that point in time, I was actually more chill and as a result, I did things at my own pace. And thankfully, I did that because here are my results for semester 2. It turned out even better than expected. And during this semester, my NUS kept actually shot up from 4.6 to about 4.68. And if you were to do away with my um, elective modules, my cap for the concurrent degree program actually rose up to 4.5, which was um, sufficient to continue on with the program. So after this semester, this, the school actually uh, submitted our results to the University of Melbourne, who then gave us a conditional offer. And what I meant by the conditional offer is that they actually offered us a place to study at the University of Melbourne but we can only move on to study there if we were to meet their prerequisite of maintaining our cap of 4.0. 
So after semester two, I actually had a really long summer break and it was during this period that I decided to take an internship. I also used that internship as a university module. So what that means is that I actually had to do a project during my internship and I also had to write weekly reflections. My supervisor will then evaluate my progress throughout the course of the internship and before deciding you know, on whether I should pass the module or not. And thankfully, I managed to score a CS grade for my internship module, which basically means completed satisfactorily, which is also a pass. Afterwards, I returned to the National University of Singapore to study for my third and final semester there. And here are my results for that third semester. So my NUS cap actually increased to 4.7 and if you were to do away with my elective modules, my cap for the concurrent degree program actually remained at 4.5. Yep, so I actually performed much better than expected for this semester because since I've already received the conditional offer, I decided to you know become more chill during this semester and the effort that I put into my modules actually decreased um, significantly compared to the effort that I put in during the second semester. So seeing that I've done much better than I expected was actually great I guess. So overall during my time studying at the National University of Singapore I actually managed to get a 4.7 um, GPA and my cap for the concurrent degree program was actually about 4.5 which allowed me to move on to study at the University of Melbourne. Also, after my third semester, I actually had to sit for a situational judgement test as well which was also one of the requirements to get into the University of Melbourne. So here is my grade for the situational judgement test which is called the Casper test. So to get this grade for the Situation judgment test. I actually started studying for it a few months before the test. I've already made a video explaining how I did well for my Casper test, so do check it out over here. So I hope that my results will at least provide you guys with some insight on what it takes to make it to vet school. And I really hope that you guys will excel in your studies and in whatever you do as well, and will also eventually make it on to vet school. Stay awesome and see you all in future videos.